welcome back to Months and Made This. My name is Michael, I cook vegan food. So if you want more vegan recipes, content like that, you should click the subscribe button below. You should probably also click the bell notification so that you're notified when new videos come out. Why don't you click the like as well? Cause I know you're gonna like this video because I love the recipe that I'm about to share with you today. So when it's hot outside, like I think it's 104 outside right now, it was 115 last week. It's crazy hot here in Vegas. Uh, and I don't like to eat hot food. I like to eat cold food, but I don't like to miss out on the foods that I love. So I like to convert cold weather dishes like casseroles and things like that into cold salads and cold dishes. And that's just what I've done with today's recipe. I have taken a soup, minestrone soup, and I have turned it into a salad. So this is what I'm calling my spirit of minestrone salad. It's spirit in terms of, it's the idea of minestrone in terms of the ingredients, but also in terms of just using what you've got on hand to make a delicious dish. Well, not much is gonna happen here at the island. First off, we need to head back to the stove, even though this is a cold dish, some uh, components of it are cooked in advance. So let's head back to the stove and I'll tell you a little bit more about this amazing salad. Here are a few of the veggies that will be going into our salad. We have onions, carrot, red bell pepper, and zucchini. And I actually have a pan over here that's heated up and these are gonna go in here. Now, I don't wanna cook these all the way through by any means. I just kinda want to, as the recipe I wrote for this says, you just wanna kinda cook some of the rawness off. Um, I also wanna salt and pepper them so that they have some seasoning and flavor so that when they go into the salad, they don't take away from the delicious dressing, which I will talk about here in just a minute. So those can hang out for just a second. They're probably gonna maybe go like five minutes. In addition to the veggies, we also have some pasta because what would be a minestrone soup without pasta? Although I think there is some kind of debate as to whether or not minestrone has pasta, but the spirit of this dish is using the ingredients that you have. It's sort of uh, Italian peasant cooking. So use whatever pasta you have on hand, use what veggies you have on hand. By the way, this water is already salted. So I'm gonna season these up here. And um, yeah, no more than five minutes. I'm gonna keep an eye on them. I just want them to, I don't even know if soften's the right word. I just want them to not have so much bite, but I don't want them to soften. I don't want them to really lose their color. Maybe they can gain a little color from the pan. Um, I did add a little bit of olive oil to this. If you wanted to make this oil free, you absolutely could. Just make sure you use a pan that you don't have to use oil. Um, the vinaigrette that I'll be making in, in just a minute as well does have oil. Um, you could use broth instead if you wanted. So this recipe, like I said, the spirit of minestrone, use what you have, use what you cook with. Um, and I think whichever direction you go in, it'll taste great. Another reason it's a good idea to cook these veggies in advance is because it'll help lose some of the water so that it doesn't make the salad soggy. Uh, and as much as I want these veggies to have a lot of texture, the pasta though is gonna be a little bit different. Now I'm the kind of person growing up with an Italian mother, uh, never overcooking the pasta, making sure that it's al dente. But when you're putting pasta into a salad like this, you really wanna make sure that it's cooked all the way through. Um, because al dente pasta, once it gets cold or cools down, uh, it has a tendency to get like even more of a bite. So you wanna make sure that it's really well cooked. I think this package says to cook it for like 10 to 12 minutes. So I'm definitely gonna go in the more like 12 to 13 minute direction. Um, but of course I'll be tasting it to make sure that it's okay. Uh, I'm gonna let these veggies go maybe one more minute um, because I can see that the, as I said, the rawness is leaving them, um, but I don't want them to lose color or too much texture. All right, so the veggies are done to my liking and I want to take them out of the pan so they don't continue to cook. And I do wanna make sure to get everything out of here so I capture all of that flavor. And magically, all of the ingredients for my dressing are right here as well. So we're gonna go ahead and make that. The pasta still has a couple minutes left to go. So um, this is all gonna be happening in a jar. If you wanted to do it in a blender, you could. The tomato paste that's in this dressing um, has a tendency to clump up if you don't use some aggression with it, whether it's shaking it in a jar or using a blender. Uh, and I haven't said it already, but this is, I'm calling it my zippy uh, Italian dressing. No, I'm not calling it that. What did I call it? Zippy tomato vinaigrette. Yeah, let's go with that. Zippy tomato vinaigrette. So I'm gonna start adding all the ingredients to the jar. Ben's giving me eyes like, wow, you spaced out on this dressing that you named yourself. Uh, so I'm just gonna add all the ingredients to the jar and I'll tell you what they are as I do it. 
first ingredient I'm adding is this tomato paste. And this is actually from a tube. It's double strength, but you can use whatever tomato paste you have. Olive oil. Again, if you wanted to make this oil free, you could just use veggie broth if you wanted. Um, but I really like what the oil does. There's something about the mixture of like olive oil and tomato paste or olive oil and paprika. I just love when you get sort of this like vibrant red oil that kind of just like the tomato or the paprika really perfumes it. I don't know, it's a thing that I really enjoy. But again, if you're not eating oil, use broth. To this, I'm adding apple cider vinegar. If you wanted to use rice vinegar, if you wanted to use red wine vinegar, you absolutely could. Nutritional yeast. Um, this sort of is like my Parmesan cheese equivalent. It adds kind of the same flavor that a parm would. Uh, salt, pepper, red pepper flake, Italian seasoning, and a little bit of sugar. Uh, if you wanted to make this SOS free, no salt, oil, or sugar, obviously leave the salt, oil, and sugar out. This is a bit of Dijon mustard, and this adds just a tiny bit of flavor, but moreover, okay. Uh, moreover, it helps the dressing to emulsify. So obviously vinegar and oil or anything with an oil is not going to come together, but adding a bit of uh, mustard like this just really helps it kind of emulsify. That's the right word for it. The last thing I'm gonna add is garlic. I don't normally use this garlic press, but it is perfect for this. So one clove of garlic pressed into this jar. All right, that is all the ingredients for this dressing. And now I'm going to aggressively shake it up until it is emulsified. <laughs> I think it's good. It looks good. Let's give it a taste just so we can make sure this is a pretty thick vinaigrette compared to maybe others that you've made. Really coats the scraper here. Honestly, like this is my new favorite salad dressing of the season. And you know I love my universal vegan cold salad dressing, which is like a tofu based mayo, but I'm pretty sure this is gonna start going on everything now. So uh, I'm gonna check the pasta. As soon as that's done, I'm gonna drain it. I'll come back here to the island add the rest of the ingredients and uh, add the dressing and we're pretty much done. We're in salad town. <laughs> so stupid. So before I take the pasta out, I do wanna test it. Again, you don't want this to be like too al dente. Unlike normal pasta dishes, you want this to be like borderline. You don't want it overcooked, but still has a little bit of chew. I'm gonna let it go one more minute and then I think it'll be good. But yeah, if it gets cold, or dente pasta just tastes raw or has the texture of raw pasta and it's not pleasant, it'll really stand out in this salad. So make sure it's well cooked. The pasta is cooked and I'm carefully going to bring it over here to the colander in the sink. And normally I would not do this with pasta, but I'm going to be rinsing it in cold water. Again, this is going to be a cold salad. So I want to stop the cooking. And uh, I also want to rinse off some of the extra starch that's on the surface of the noodles because that'll just prevent it from getting too stodgy once it cools. So rinse this off for a second, make sure it's fully drained, and then uh, as I said earlier, it's on to salad town. Here is my drained and rinsed pasta going right into the bowl with the veggies we lightly sauteed. Uh, and I hope that you don't mind the fact that I don't really cut veggies on this channel. I kind of stopped after my first year on YouTube because I feel like people know how to cut stuff. But if that's not true, like if you really want to see how I cut the veggies, um, comment below that you do want to see that part of the preparation. Um, other veggies that I'm going to be adding, this is a tomato. It's just been seeded and cut. And I was really conscious about making sure that all the veggies were cut about the same size, uh, about the same size as the pasta as well. So that's just something to be conscious of. One thing I didn't cut, but I thawed, these are some green beans, just frozen thawed green beans. And then lastly, what would minestrone be without some beans? Um, I had some white beans already cooked in my fridge. I opened up a can of kidney beans. Let's just add them all. And that is pretty much our salad. So it's like a pasta salad. Obviously it's not dressed yet, I'll get to that, but it's like a pasta salad, it's like a bean salad. There are some minestrone soups that do have potatoes in them. So if you wanted to cook some potatoes up or sweet potatoes, you could add that here as well. 
It's really up to you, and as I've said about five times already, what you have on hand. So let's dress this here. Get all of the dressing. Do not waste any of this. So the best thing about pasta salads is they get to hang out in your fridge. They get to live there while you live your life. And when you get hungry, you just pop open the fridge and they're there. I'm not even like a person that's like, this is great for a party because I truly live off things like this in the summer. These are my favorite dishes to prepare. You make it once, you've got a few different meals. This one's fairly balanced. You got veggies, you've got pasta. Um, it's just like a pasta dish that's cold salad formed. So ideally, you want this in the fridge two hours, four hours. It's just gonna really help the flavor. The beans, the pasta, they're all gonna absorb that dressing. But if you're in a hurry and you're hungry, you can serve it immediately. It is not a big deal. The last thing I'm going to add before I serve it though is gonna be some parsley. Um, but don't wanna get ahead of myself. So let me finish mixing this and then I will dish myself up a bowl. time time to give this a taste uh, I added some fresh parsley on top as well as some vegan parm uh, it's just a sunflower parm it'll be linked in the recipe below as well let's give this a go mm. like I said I've been obsessed with my vegan universal salad dressing the creaminess trying to replicate mayonnaise based salads and I love that dressing so much but this dressing it's vibrant, it's got like deep umami flavor, and just this particular salad where you've got so many things going on, so many textures, crunchy, chewy, it's just the best. It's also acidic. It's also nice and acidic, bright. The beans, like I said, it's like, sorry, I can't stop eating it. It's just a nice balanced meal that happens to be a cold salad based on a hot soup, so you definitely need to give this a try. This type of recipe is kind of an idea that I've been playing with for a while, thinking of maybe turning the channel into a direction of easier, quicker, or more economical uh, type of recipe. So if this is the kind of content you want more of, definitely comment below and let me know these are the kind of recipes you want to see. So uh, anyways, I can't stop eating this. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for subscribing, clicking the bell notification for liking this video. Thanks to all the channel members as well and Patreon subscribers. I really appreciate it. And uh, I will be finishing this over on Months and Athis. So if you wanna see more Months and Athis videos, click the link below and you can become a channel member as well. So thanks again, and I will see you next time with a brand new recipe video. Mm -hmm.